the thing about life is things don't always pan out the way you expect. Sometimes you wrap a buffet in a tarp and you hope it doesn't get wet. But when a tropical storm blows through, it's hard for a veneer to stay true. Even if the build was excellent, glue can fail and wood can become spent. Nature will reclaim everything. That is what they say. But this buffet will not be taken to the dump today. This buffet arrived in my garage compliments of Corey at Mission Side Hustle. It was initially purchased at auction with the intention of flipping it, but it incurred water damage during one of the wonderful tropical storms that happened in Florida. His video will be linked in the description if you'd like to see that video that led to this project. He's got some pretty cool videos over on his channel, so if you like side hustles and that type of information, make sure you subscribe to his channel. The manufacturer of this buffet is the Grand Rapids Chair Company. You can tell the initial build of this buffet was rock solid. However, with several days of exposure to Florida's humidity, the veneer not only started to separate, but it was splitting into several layers. The top was spent and I ended up throwing that away the night that I brought it home. When I looked at the layers, I started to see that there was mildew and mold growing in it and I discarded that post haste. It was definitely not savable. Welcome to my channel. My name is Emily, and if you enjoy furniture videos or general shenanigans, make sure that you click the subscribe button. I often start projects like this without really having a clear vision on what I need to do with it. Some projects are easier than others, but with this project, I really didn't know how bad everything was, so I just simply started taking things apart to get rid of as much damage as I possibly could. The first thing to go was the hardware, which was in great condition, and I stored that in a container so I didn't lose any of the pieces. I removed the cabinet doors so that I could remove the veneer from the face of the cabinet doors more easily. And it also allowed me to gain access to fix the cabinet bottoms that were also broken. Now, these screws are a very soft metal and using something like a drill to remove these would have immediately stripped them out. So I used a flathead screwdriver instead. Once the doors were out of the way, I began assessing the inside of the cabinets. The water damage had warped the wood on the bottom too badly to easily fit them back together. And when I initially brought this piece home, I had not expected I would need to get new cabinet bottoms. But these ones were too badly warped. It was a bit heartbreaking, to be honest. Next up, I went to removing the veneer from the piece. All of the veneer was pretty badly damaged. Some parts came off easier than others, and other areas I needed to use the heat gun to remove the remaining sections. Overall, this process took me about two evenings just to remove all of the veneer off of the buffet. This included the sides, all of the drawer faces, the cabinets, underneath the buffet even had layers of veneer that had to be removed. I flipped the buffet over to access the bottom to remove the veneer from underneath it. And I noticed that in between the backer board, the veneer covering and the wood itself, there was a lot of mildew. This, again, was something I'd hoped would still be okay to use, but this discovery meant that it would need to be replaced.
After removing all of the damaged components, I wanted to clean the piece down before sanding. I vacuumed the dust up and the debris, and then I used crud cutter to remove any leftover residue. After removing the back of the buffet, I found that there was also structural separation on the center area of the buffet. I repaired this using wood glue loaded into a syringe. I then clamped the boards together and allowed the glue to dry with the clamps in place for 24 hours. I grabbed some Minwax color changing stainable wood filler to fill in the wormwood holes and other general damage on the buffet from the veneer removal and just general wear and tear. The buffet itself appeared to be constructed using wormwood in areas that wouldn't normally be visible. And after everything had dried, I grabbed my Makita orbital sander and sanded all of the surfaces smooth. Some of the areas I had to use 100 grit sandpaper on to smooth out any of the remaining veneer and wood glue but my final grit of sandpaper was 180 grit. I discovered a few more areas that needed to be repaired while sanding. One of the legs was split and I filled that with wood glue and clamped it and left it overnight. Also the bottom portion of the substrate on the side of the buffet was no longer adhered to the boards behind it so I glued this as well and used tape to hold it against the wood. I hand sanded the rest of the detailed areas on the buffet. My vision at this point for the buffet is to stain just the legs. The substrate where the veneer was removed was poplar and it doesn't take stain very well. I chose General Finish's Java Gel Stain, which is a very deep, dark, rich brown. I applied the stain using a rag and then wiped it off, moving in sections. Midway through staining the legs, I ended up knocking over the gel stain container all over the bottom center of the buffet. I did my best to scoop as much back in the can as possible, and then I just spread the rest of the gel stain over the bottom center of the buffet. I would planned to paint this because it looked really rough, but I guess we'll just go with stain for this area. I'd gotten quite a lot of gel stain on my hands, so I used some mineral spirits to clean the stain off, and then I washed my hands with soap and water afterwards. With the veneer removal on the underside of the buffet, I also had to remove the extra glued-in support wedges. 
To replace these, I cut strips of pine and then I glued them where the triangular wedges were. The entire strip was probably overkill for what I replaced, but I'd rather err on the side of overdoing it. I chose poplar hobby boards to replace the cabinet shelves since they were the same thickness and approximate width as the original shelves. I cut those so they would fit inside the shelves as well. I knew I would need to make final cuts to have the last two boards fit, but I figured I would do all my mitered cuts at the same time. I wanted to reattach some of the trim that was removed from the top drawer to give it some of its original character back. Unfortunately, some of the other trim pieces were too damaged to reuse, and so I ended up marking the center of the trim and the center of the drawer, and I glued and taped the trim pieces back on using that center point. Before I started painting the piece, I actually changed my mind and hand sanded down the solid wood trim pieces on the buffet and stained those in a Java gel stain as well. I felt much better about this look than I did just having a solid color on the top. I then used a tack cloth to clean up any of the dust and debris before I started to paint. I started with the bottom of the buffet. It looked pretty rough even after some sanding and painting the bottom would give it that cleaner look. I had enough Carts and Millie Black Bear paint left over to cover the bottom and so that's what I ended up using. For the body of the buffet, I opened it up to my YouTube community for feedback on the color. If you're not subscribed, make sure you are so you can participate and get updates on my community posts. There was a lot of comments about mixing the two together. I wasn't sold on the idea, but before I even started the project, the decision was more or less made for me when I dropped an entire sealed brand new container of coal black fusion mineral paint on my garage floor. No worries though, we had enough left over to mix the two together and that's what I ended up doing. Between the buffet accidentally being damaged in a tropical storm, the black paint spill and gel stain spill, I decided to name this color Mishaps Blue. I taped off the doors and drawers before painting to create a cleaner edge. For the larger areas, I used my 25mm sleek brush that I received from Carts and Millie. 
And for the detailed areas, I used my craft brush to edge into the corner areas where I did not use tape. Hand painting edges is a weirdly tedious job that I occasionally enjoy doing. I applied three thin coats of the paint and I sanded it with 400 grit before applying the third and final coat. This helps to smooth out the brush strokes. Since the original buffet top had been trashed, I had to get a new one. I really love walnut wood grain. It isn't feasible though to get a solid piece of walnut to put on this buffet. So instead I opted to get walnut plywood. This will be really durable and likely withstand temperature shifts over the years. I ordered this on Home Depot's website and it came pre-cut from the manufacturer. Before I attach the top to the buffet, I needed to apply walnut edge banding to the sides. I had leftover edge banding from a previous project that was oversized, which worked out better for the longer lengths of the plywood. I use painter's tape to position the pre-glued edge banding to the sides of the plywood and I trim it down using scissors. I then start from the center using my iron and work my way around to each side, removing the tape as I go. Once everything has had time to cool off, I come back in with my chisel and I remove the excess veneer. I then take a sanding block with 180 grit sandpaper on it and smooth things out. The color on this top was really interesting. I sprayed it down with water to get the grain to raise on it so I could sand the piece down, but I ended up really liking the color that showed up. And after the water had dried, I took my 180 grit sandpaper and sanded the top smooth, feeling for any rough spots as I go. Because I liked the color of the top so much, I decided not to stain it and use its natural color. I sealed the entire buffet using Minwax aerosol polyurethane and a satin finish. The blue color for the paint was dark enough that it didn't change the color of the paint very much by using a polyurethane instead of a water-based poly. I did a test swatch before I applied it, however. When I'm applying my finish, I apply at least two coats of it, usually three, even on the body because I use thinner coats and I always sand and use a tack cloth to wipe the dust away before my final coat. To attach the top, I had to drill new screw holes on the back since the original holes pointed in the opposite direction, and I also purchased new screws since the original top was a bit thicker and the screws were pretty rusty. Before I could secure the shelves inside of the buffet, I needed to make some cuts, to the last two boards specifically. So I laid the boards out in the cabinet and then I marked off the area that I needed to cut. Once all the cuts were made, I glued and used finishing nails to secure the boards. I then sanded them down and applied the Java gel stain to them. And once that was dry, I sealed them in three coats of Minwax finish as well. I used two underlayment boards that were cut square for the backer board. However, there were gaps between the two boards, so I just used some hobby board with finishing nails to cover the gap. When I went to attach the doors back to the buffet, I used brass screws instead to give it a cleaner look. 
I used Wise Owl Furniture Salve and the scent Lemon Verbena to add some extra protection to the raw wood backer board, the drawer bottoms and slides, and the interior of the buffet that was not sealed. Once applied, I let it set for at least 30 minutes and I came back and wiped the excess. I also picked up two four packs of nylon sliders from Ace Hardware to replace the rusted ones that I took off initially. I nailed them in to all six legs using a rubber mallet. The hardware was washed in Dawn dish soap and left to soak in a jar of vinegar for three days. I then used Barkeeper's Friend to scrub away the years of grime. They were not perfect, but they looked quite a bit more vibrant when they were done. We're finally here. We made it. Let's take a brief moment to see what we started with. And here's where we ended up. If you've made it all the way to the end of the video, make sure you click the thumbs up button and check out some of my other videos.